I'm a man of my word. So guys, welcome to the second installment of Tales from the Desk, where we take a look at all sorts of horror stories of models that I've worked on in my time as, you know, a model railroader. Uh, last time, it was a pretty short video, and it's kind of lame, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm not really going to... I think I had a ranking system that I incorporated, which I'm not going to do that whatsoever. <laughs> but... So yeah, this is a um, this is an Athern Genesis GP forty dash two W two L two L. It got to be politically correct. And as you can see, I spent a pretty penny on this. Um, yeah, it's Guilford, Main Central reporting mark. Well, I'll I'll talk about the nightmare as we go along, starting with the nickname. I guess I'll. I guess I'll explain the nickname while I'm opening it up. So this engine has earned the nickname of Stimmy Jimmy because it was purchased with the stimulus check earlier this year. Uh, yeah. And so I saw it. I saw it in the hobby shop. And so I, uh, so, you know, we got it. I was like, okay, Henry, you know what? You get a couple bucks, too. Like, okay. So we went down to Nondescript and Train Store, which I've also purchased way too many models from. But, you know, I, I love that place. You know. And then we, then we found it. And, you know, I'm like, hmm, you know, this is a cool train. It's been here for a few years. Why not just take it home? And so that's what I did. I guess I'll... I'm just going to finish taking off all this. And then I can start talking about the model. So, this, this is it. This is Stimmy Jimmy, as he's been affectionately dubbed by the story that I literally just told you. So this is a early 2010s, I want to say 2013, 2014 at the latest, Athern Genesis GP40-2. The only reason I really have it, at least, well, beyond it being Guilford, is um, Model Railroader had a huge, like, two or three page advertisement that Athern paid for that Athern paid to have in their magazine and I I went crazy like I wanted one so bad and over the years I had just slowly forgotten about it but then as you heard I had a chance to get one and so you know I, I got it here it is but here's where the nightmares begin so I brought it home that day the uh, the bar the the box neither the manual nor the box signifies that this has DCC but it also doesn't say that it doesn't have DCC i would i would appreciate it if Athen genesis put a label that said like DCC ready 8/9 pin like DCC sound and then the specifics of the decoder or like, and then within the manual it would say, your decoder, blah, 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 has, needs this. You know, that would be cool. But it doesn't say any of that. And so I brought it home and was disappointed to find out that it was DCC ready and not DCC sound. And so instead, I turned to my good buddy, the Digitrax DH126. I legit have maybe half a dozen of these laying around for projects that I have. Just all, all sorts of crap. And it's like, you know what? I'll just slap one of these in here. But what I didn't know is that the ditch lights aren't wired to the headlight, but instead to function one on the computer board. On the PCB. On the, on the, in the, on the internal board. So I spent... Maybe, yeah, I spent an entire night figuring out that something was wrong. 
And so we went back to the hobby shop, and then I was given a DH-166, which, which this doesn't have because I recently rewired it so that the ditch lights and the headlights connect up to, to the same input and output. It was, it was frustrating. Not, not only did I have to get a brand new decoder, I had to go to the store and get a whole nother decoder just to make all the lights work. Whatever. Recently, as I've mentioned before, I rewired it so that the ditch lights on the front, on the back they're wired to the headlight, but on the front they're wired to function one. I have these ditch lights wired up to the headlight now, so it's, it's all good. But oh no! Oh no! It doesn't stop there! Let's talk about the details! So it turns out that because this model was released in like 2012, 2013, 2014, I don't remember the exact date, but it was like the early to mid 2010s. Because it had been sitting in a box for like the greater part of a decade, a bunch of the details were just gone stupid. Like these, I had to re-glue the, um, the intake vents because they had just snapped off. The, the, um, the sun shades, the sun visors had also just decided to, one of them legit ran away in my initial review of the engine. And I I'd spent like 20 minutes trying to find it. And then I finally super glued it into place. And then there's, um, I guess I'll pick it up. There are these brake lines or sand lines to the tender. They're just so flimsy. Like I, they're so flimsy. Like, you could... I'm sure if you blew on them for long enough, they would, like, break apart. Yeah, it, it was... It was in shambles, and I... I was wanting to return it. But since... But since the only issues were the mechan were the electrical issues, which could be resolved either by a $30 decoder or moving two whole wires, I decided against it. And, you know... If we ignore those issues, I actually really like the model. It's a solid representation of an EMD GP40-2L. Um, 2W, whatever. I mean, some of the tooling is really showing its age. Like, there are very slight gaps in, like, these intake covers. I don't know if you can see, but it looks like it's wearing a mask. Will it, will it focus on that? Okay, it just, it refuses to focus, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'll throw pictures up on screen of this entire experience, because I have them buried in a folder somewhere. Yeah, the engine, it runs good. It runs like an Ather, you know? It's good, it's strong, it's reliable, and I don't hate it. I, I don't know why it's wobbling when I'm touching it. Maybe the wheels are out of gauge. I don't know. I still have to toy with this both electrically and, and cosmetically. Once I figured out all of the issues I had with this model, it's a good model. You know, I guess I'll just give you a spin around. And I'm sure I'll throw up pictures of it in the white space at the end of the video. You see, it's got the, the standard Canadian ditch lights, or at least as best as lighted ditch lights from that era could look. Did I mention that this uses incandescent bulbs instead of LEDs? Yeah, a Athern also uses LEDs as a selling point now, which is absolutely wacky. But alas, I'm no model train manufacturer, so I can't judge. But yeah, all the details, all the details are fine once I resolved all the issues with it. It runs fine. It looks fine. It's fine. It's, it's not amazing. Not, not by a long shot. But it's good enough to the point where the struggle with these is acceptable. If you pay, you know, not $120. Which I'll admit, I do kind of regret it. But listen, uh, you know, our favorite... Uh, Joe Biden wanted to put, wanted to kick the economy in the butt and get it going again. You know what? This is for you. Hello, America. 
so yeah, that's that's just about everything I can think of that I had with this engine. Um, I'm hoping that this doesn't sound like a rant or a ramble, but it probably does. But uh, yeah, I think I think that's gonna have to do it for this video. Um, I'll see you on the next one. Um, I don't know. You 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 might be seeing a little bit more of this in the future. I might I might try and do something wacky, like, you know, put a sound decoder in it, but. That's a hundred bucks away, and frankly, other engines need sound decoders a lot more than this. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll get some of that um, Tsunami Ekonami board stuff. I don't know. We'll figure it out in time. That's going to have to do it for this episode of Tales from the Desk. And I'll see you all in the next one. Happy Halloween! <laughs> yeah, that's it.